To all who need comfort. To all who need friendship. To all who are lonely and need companionship. To all who need sheltering love. To all who sin and need a savior. John Gray Memorial Church opens wide its doors and in the name of the Lord says, Welcome. 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 Hello and welcome to John Gray Memorial Church. We gather by God's grace. It is by God's grace that we are changed. It is God's grace on which we depend to enliven our worship. So come, let us join together as we sing and pray and give God the glory in this time of worship.
let us pray. Lord of heaven and earth and sea, we give you praise and glory. We own you as our creator, our father, and our merciful God. Although you cause mighty volcanoes to erupt, tumultuous seas to roll, and fierce winds to blow, you are still concerned with the smallest of your creatures and accept us with open arms when we come to you. We come to worship you this morning that all may know that we are not ashamed to say, I am a child of the one true living God. Dear God, our Father, we confess our shortcomings and inadequacies. We are a proud and self-centered people. We know that all we have, have comes from you, and yet we bathe in the compliments heaped on us for some achievement without giving you the glory. Even though we know that you want us to share our worldly goods, we often only give what we have left over, and that sometimes grudgingly. We confess that we have turned our back when the Christian thing to have done was to have lent a helping hand. There are times when we have followed our own instincts without asking for your guidance. We stubbornly carry on and then moan when things go wrong. We only ask for your help when we need extracting from the swamp of our self-centeredness. We confess that we have committed sins we, which we are not even aware of. We call your name in vain. We slight our brother or sister. We are spiteful and unkind. We fail to turn the other cheek. We gossip and implicate ourselves in the spread of hurtfulness. We do not love our brother or sister as we love ourselves. Even though we are created in your image, we confess that we sometimes live less harmoniously than the animals of a lowest, lower order. We are a pitiful example of you. We confess that we do not even pray and worship you as we should. Dear Father, we confess privately the wrongs we are aware of and ask you to forgive them together with those we are unconscious of doing. Wipe our slate clean so we can start our week with a fresh resolution to try and mend our ways. Accept our contriteness and restore us to your grace. Amen. Today's scripture reading is taken from Matthew chapter 13, verses 31 to 33, and verses 44 to 52. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that birds come and perch in its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it all worked through the dough. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy, went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up onto the shore then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets and threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asks. Yes, 
they replied. He said to them, Therefore, every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out his storeroom, new treasures as well as old. This is the word of the Lord. Purify my heart Let me be as gold And precious silver Purify my heart Let me be as gold Pure gold Refiner's fire My heart's one desire is to be holy, set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be holy, set apart for you. Ready to do your will. In telling the parables of Matthew 13, Jesus' intention seems to be to subvert the normal expectation of his listeners. There were more positive examples, certainly, of plants that he might have used to tell his point. Instead, he declares that the kingdom of God is like what was often a weed, a mustard seed. Then later on, he says that the kingdom is like leaven or like fishing for people, which are all fairly negative and therefore shocking images. The parable of the mustard seed is interesting, not only because of the smallness of the seed, but also the weediness of the mustard plant. For this mustard bush, would become this thing, that a tree that birds could find nest in. This expresses the hope that the kingdom will draw in all the birds, even the Gentiles and all people, in peace and reconciliation. The parable of the yeast is equally provocative as that of the mustard tree, for it speaks of potentially poisonous stuff providing bread. And the parable of the fishing net returns to the theme of judgment, echoing the idea that God, the righteous judge, will evaluate our actions and our motivations in judgment. From the vantage point of the Torah purity code, things that are not alike are not supposed to be mixed. In fact, in Leviticus, we are told that you should not sow your field with two kinds of seed. Thus, Jesus is exhorting his hearers in the stories of Matthew chapter 13 to defy not only common sense, but also allowing and even honoring the mixture of weeds in their cultivated gardens, and also encourages transgression of temporal religious authority. Friends, most of us are dedicated weeders. We tend to pamper our gardens, root out and destroy unsightly and unwanted weeds. This perhaps is a good metaphor for the way we treat ourselves. We are dedicated weeders pulling out those things that are bad habits or addictions, attitudes, even guilt and any tendencies that we believe might keep us from being pure or good or complete or mature or whole or authentic or even perfect. We are determined to weed out bad feelings and dark moods, fears and anxieties, painful memories and the broken and bruised parts of our lives in the same way that we weed off excess pounds or remove wrinkles. We often think that the gardens of our lives where we would grow and where we would enjoy relationships that matter are to be properly ordered and uncluttered from weeds such as fear, and anger, and shame, and ancient grudges. Our efforts at forever pulling the weeds out of the gardens of our lives to make it perfect might be a mistaken and futile chore. 
is it possible that Jesus is saying that what you want most to get rid of is what might grow and nourish you? Could we then be missing the kingdom right before our eyes? Could we be looking high up and far out when it is right amongst us, in the midst of the weeds of our lives? The kingdom of heaven is like a man who spots treasure in a field. He hides it and he sold all that he had, comes back in order to buy the field, in order to get the treasure. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant who travels the world in search of a pearl. And when he finds it, he sells everything that he has in order to buy it. If the man and the merchant in the stories speak of God, who lovingly and graciously sought us out and bought us, all the time joyful at his great acquisition, then it leaves us with the question, what was there in us that compelled God and drove God to give everything up for us? And the answer is nothing. This tells us that the treasures might not always look like a treasure. They sometimes are to be found in the midst of weeds and hard labor, where there is deceit and difficulty. So that in the story, the treasure is in a field, in dirt, in mud. And Paul reminds us that we have this treasure in jars of clay, according to 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 7. The tre treasure is not all neat. It's not all clean. It is real. It is earthy. It is solid. It is imperfect. It's tarnished. It's even broken. Christ didn't die for us when we were perfect. It is all while we were still sinners that Christ died for us, according to Romans 5 and verse 8. He didn't wait for us to get our acts sorted out. He didn't wait to become, for us to become righteous. He didn't wait for us to pull up our socks. He didn't wait for all of that because he searched for us. He got joyful in the pursuit of us and even more joyful when he found us. It is a joy then that scripture lifts up that theme again and again, that God came to us long before we saw our need for God. We are reminded that, God, you did not wait for me to draw near to you. Just as the story of the prodigal tells us that while the son was still a long way off, the father saw him and ran to him. There's no room then in our lives for the thinking what can I do that will make God love me more? Or what can I do to bring God's blessings on my life? The truth is that God is overjoyed. God sells everything. God gives up everything, even God's very life, all when you and I are covered in mud. Praise the Lord, this is so liberating. Yet many of us have believed a lie about God. We think that God doesn't like us, yet alone love us. And that God is eager to judge or disapprove or wag the finger at us. And that we need to appease God in order for God to show us favor. This belief or belief or thinking has bound us up. The real truth is that God is slow to anger and abounding in love. God's love for us is out of God's very nature. God loves us just because God is love. God is full of joy over us. God is always looking for us and embracing us even when we are giving up on our, ourselves. But also, know the truth about treasures, that it can come about both in passing or in the intentional looking or seeking. One man in the story happened on it while the other one sought for it. If the treasure is among weeds, among deceit and shifting agreements, then maybe we should start looking for them, embracing those unlikely elements of ourselves and others where the treasure might be hiding. Could Jesus be saying that the kingdom of God might be found where we keep secret and hidden the not so orderly and the even very embarrassing weed side of our lives. The place that we are most intent on camouflaging with goodness and money and success and class 
and cosmetics and culture and virtue and on being religious. Finding the treasure of the kingdom within us and between us, spread out before us, requires dying. Dying to a God who hides in heaven or waits in the wings until we have pulled up all the weeds. Awakening to a God of involvement in our lives. A God who is compassionate and good. Dying to the temptation to ignore the treasures in the weeds. To become so overwhelmed or satisfied among the weeds that we don't see the real blessing. And instead awakening to the power of God to transform and to bless us. The warning is that we must be careful not to miss the kingdom. Or we might be discarded like the fish caught in the net, but not good enough for consumption. Be careful lest we embrace counterfeit treasures. A London taxi driver found an ingenious way to keep his cab clean. He would wrap up the leftovers from his lunch together with any other garbage that anybody else had left behind in the cab in newspaper at the end of each day and leave it on the back seat of his cab. By the end of the day, it was almost always gone. Someone stole it, hoping for a treasure. But of course, when they would open it, they would end up with a big surprise instead. Sometimes the things that we think are worthless are the very things that God uses in our lives for his glory. Remind us, Lord God, even when we are looking for you to high up or far away, to instead look among the weeds in our garden that we infrequently discount, that we seek to root out and hide. And when we confuse your kingdom with our efforts to be good, to be virtuous, whole, authentic, brave, pure, or even religious, give us eyes to find you in the common rather than in the rare, in the familiar rather than the extraordinary. Not so much in being special, but being ordinary. Rather than in our strength and beauty to meet you in our weakness and scars in the place that you dwell. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, you know our inmost thoughts before the words cross our lips. Your wisdom embraces the seen and the unseen. Your judgment probes to the core of our being. Your love extends beyond the furthest reaches of the oceans. The highest peaks of the mountains do not approach the heights of your compassion. You are a God whose anger is kindled by injustice, whose heart is touched by the suffering of a child. Your grace extends to those who bow down and worship your name. You have sent Christ as a means of salvation to all who believe. We give our thanks, O Lord, that in him you look with favor upon us. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may be found acceptable in your sight, our strength and redeemer. We pray that we shall stand firm in the face of tribulation. May our conviction not waver as we witness in Christ's name. When we are tossed to and fro by the trials that beset us, give us clear heads and open hearts that we may hear what you are saying. As we confront contemporary demons that tempt us from your way, keep us resolute in Christ's own power over the destructive power of evil. We pray for boldness to risk greater ventures, to take specific steps in response to your love. Give us the sense to recognize evil and courage to oppose it. As Christ was released from the tomb that bound him, may we too be freed, freed from powers that impede us. Lift us to the heights where we can gain a vision of your eternal order. Then send us in the midst of those who need a glimpse of your peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
to God's Word with confidence and hope, for God's presence is with you in all that you do. Be those people who plant seeds of comfort and hope, and God will bring about the harvest in due time. And may the love of our gracious God, the salvation of our glorious Savior, and the peace of our comforting spirit be with you today and always. Amen.